basketball, right? I mean, at what point were you like... Alright, I'm gonna pick this sport, because everybody grows through sport, right? right? It doesn't matter right. if it's basketball or I mean, curling, you know, right. it could be anything, but right. you're growing through your sport, why'd you pick basketball? Well, actually, I played soccer. I was a really big soccer player, and when I was in fifth grade, I had to make a choice of whether or not I wanted to play basketball for Dick Miller, which is like my school basketball, or play indoor soccer because it was during the same same time, and it was just too much to keep, you know, going back and forth. So I decided to go with basketball, and I still played soccer, but it was a fall sport, and I just loved basketball, and that's what carried me on. Wow. So, I mean, do you miss soccer? Do you still play? I don't still play. I don't. Uh, there's a lot of ACLs in soccer, so I kind of try to keep myself healthy. But Smart. Yeah, I mean, but I did. I played from when I was five to I was in junior high school. So it was definitely, it was, it was fun. I, I like soccer. Soccer was what got me in, in shape for basketball, so. Yeah, no, definitely. Do you remember your first day at Pitt? I do. You do? Like, I'm out of Pitt visit. was my very first day at Pitt. And I remember, like, it was yesterday. What was it? What happened? Um, I got a chance to go. We went to Pamela's down in the ship district where Coach Vito said Obama came. And then we came back to campus and went to the cathedral. And Coach B showed me the varsity walk. And it was just the campus and people here was just simply amazing. And plus I got a chance to come with Cora and Lo. And uh, we both came here and I mean, Cora and I have been friends ever since our official visit, so. Wow, that's great. Do you remember what you got at family? I do, because I get the same thing. I got crepes and I got line eyed potatoes. The only way to do it. Always. You had to do other stuff other than basketball. Mm -hmm. Was it puzzles? What did you do? Um, well, other than the basketball, I, I really like to read. I like to read. Um, that's just something that I've always liked. I'm playing rides, going on the beach, so there's something to do. And uh, that's definitely one of my hobbies. And, uh, you know, writing poetry, that's one thing I like to do too. Yeah, you know, no a little, little, little here and there. But. Oh, yeah, I should ask you to bring <laughs> What are you reading right now? Well, actually, I just read a book. I just finished it. It's called Something I'm Side. And it was a very good book. And it was, it was a little different, a little, uh, you know, sexy. It was like one of those type okay. of books, but it was, it was definitely very interesting. You went to another country. Mm -hmm. Which country was that? I went to Vietnam. What did you learn in Vietnam that when you came back to Pittsburgh, you said, all right, this is weird, this is normal, <laughs> uh -huh. this is how I'm going to act from now on? Uh, well, I went to Vietnam, and what I learned there was, I mean, it's a very poor country, and the kids there are grateful for absolutely everything. I mean, I, I, you know, brought little, you know, pictures of, you know, game, game photos, and you know, because they don't really, they don't really pay attention. This is very soccer oriented. So going in there with basketball and being able to teach these kids, the faces that they made every time they make a shot, or if they won a dribbling game, or just come in to us, and there was very, you know, talking to them was very hard. So there was a language barrier. And so we had a lot of nonverbal communication. So whenever it high five, you knew they did good. You know, they come in every morning, give you a hug. They come in and give you a high five, or you know, just see the smile. Just so they were just grateful for everything. Every time we would go there, no matter you know if it's hot, they're just giving you the same amount of energy, and that boosts you up as well. So coming back, I was just thinking that we're very grateful. I'm I'm grateful. We're blessed here. We have everything that we possibly need, and I needed to take that back. Although I. I I may have, you know, still taken some things for granted. Right. It really opened my eyes that, you know, a lot of people don't have this. A lot of people don't have the opportunity. And being able to come to college, as I was worked with, you know, college Vietnamese college students who were proficient in English, being it is so poor, they wanted to come to the United States, but there was not enough money to to help them. And you know, just come here. I have a full scholarship. I'm not in any debt, and they can't even have the opportunity to come here. And that just made me more appreciative for what Pitt has offered me. The story of your time at Pitt has been. It's been a fun ride. Yes, it has. I mean, it has. Is there one moment that sticks out that wasn't just a win or one maybe we didn't see anything like that? The moment of going to the NCAA tournament is just something that I mean, I, although you guys get a, did get a chance to see it, but you guys weren't in the moment. And, you know, it was hard for people who were outside looking in and what it was like to really struggle and to finally see your name on the NCAA berth and they were saying Chattanooga and Pittsburgh, it was the most amazing feeling I think I could ever possibly, I couldn't even put into words how amazing that feeling was. So when you had found out that Coach McConnell Sarah was going to be in charge of the team, mm -hmm. she's two-time Olympian, right? right? What, to have someone like that be able to be your teacher from then on out, right? what have you picked up from her? What it, was your first reaction? Oh, what thing? have I not picked up from her? Oh my goodness. Uh, my first reaction was wow we're getting our cross time rivals coached and I was blown away I was just like wow but I didn't know any of this I didn't you know research her or anything I just knew that we played Duquesne every year and we were rivals and 
coach. I mean, she's just a fiery coach. And I, every time I would look over and play Duquesne, it was just like, wow. And when she came in, I was like, are we really having our cross town rival coach here? And then once I got a chance to figure out, you know, what, what her status is, all the things that she accomplished. I mean, she's accomplished things that I could only wish to accomplish. And when she came here and just her first year, she started to make a turnaround. We, I mean, we went one list in our conference. We went to a new conference, and we got three wins. And now look at us now. You know, her second year here, she has turned this program into an NCAA tournament team. And, I mean, all the while, you're playing in Pittsburgh. Yep. Pittsburgh is the place where basketball really shouldn't, it's not supposed to be. There's no NBA team. There's no right. WNBA team. Right, right. What has that been like for you to play in a place where the kids who live in this city look up to you? I told you my little sister yeah, looks up to yep. you a ton. Mm -hmm. I mean, has that been more motivation for you? You know, you work for things and you work for, you know, people to look up to you and you want to be a positive light. And, you know, just to, you know, hear that from you and when the Girl Scout days come or when the students come in here and, you know, they're in elementary school, they have no idea what basketball is. And just come up there and everyone wants to, you know, see how you're doing, to get your autograph. And right. they're just so excited. and. It just really makes it all worth it. It just, you know, just see the, the smile on the face every time you make a layup, or even if you miss a shot, they're still cheering for the next one. So. Well, it's everyone. I mean, it's not right. just my little sister or mm -hmm. the kids at Pitt. I mean, you're just like a campus celebrity. Does that <laughs> like does that status ever hit you? You're like, oh, like people like know who I am. Like, is, this, <laughs> is that something you think about? Is that like you just kind of carry on? No, I, I don't consider myself campus celebrity. I just kind of go. Oh, you totally you know, are. No, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't see it. I just kind of go about my business. You know, yeah. I do. I say hello. You know. I, and I'm just the type of person that I'm very humble, and I'm I'm humble because I know what it's like to struggle. You didn't just come in here and, and be, you know, a winning record. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, you have to go through things in order to see what it's like and be grateful for when you do see positivity. So I got on the plane from Greensboro to Charlotte, and I go look at my seat, and it's 5A, and who's in 5B but Coach Farinata. Okay. And so I spent the, it was like a 22-minute ride mm -hmm. talking to her. And I'd say 90% of that was about you. Mm -hmm. And she said something that both Coach McConnell's area has, and she, they mutually agree on this. Mm -hmm. Like, the team goes as you go. Yes. And that's something Coach has said a lot. Yes. Um, and you often, you know, you put the team on your back when right. you need to. Um, is that something that you you found a good balance with? Is that something you're, you're continuously trying to climb to do more and more? How does that affect your game? Uh, I mean, I think that, you know, that confidence that they, they give me is just, you know, one that I can't even explain to you because when I have confidence, you play confident, you, you give that to your other teammates. And we are a very young team. I've been here, I've been this my fourth year, I've been started all year, so I know what it's like to struggle, I know it's like to have success. So when you take that and you go into a game, every game I'm going in there, like what do I have to do to get us to win this game? If I'm not offensively, you know, I'm not hitting, what can I do on defense? Or, you know, vice versa. Maybe I'm, I'm not playing a good defensive game. Can I get to the basket? Or, you know, am I, am I doing things to get everyone involved? And, uh, you know, as a, when, the co when the team goes as I go, when I'm struggling, we're all struggling. So I think that that puts a you know a lot of thought to me, like what can I do to make a difference? Yeah. You know, and I take that with open arms because I love having that type of you know a position on this team because I know that coach she looks to me and I look at coach and I'm the coach on the court so it kind of goes you know hand in hand. Where do you see yourself in 30 years and what are you going to think about most when you think of your time here? In 30 years I'm hoping to be a coach somewhere I would lo I love the sport and I would love to give my knowledge to you know a younger group and what I would take away from my time here is that that anything is possible. No matter how bad things may look, there's always some sort of light in the top. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very Thank much. you. I appreciate it.